In the last video, we learned that Jesus commanded his disciples to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. In this video, we look further at the bread and cup. In the True Jesus Church, we use unleavened bread in the Holy Communion. Unleavened bread is made without leaven or yeast. We know that the bread that Jesus and his disciples were eating during the Last Supper was unleavened because their meal was on Passover, the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, leaven had to be removed from the house and unleavened bread was to be eaten for seven days. In addition to unleavened bread, we also follow the teaching in the Bible to use one bread from which pieces are broken. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. This verse repeats one bread two times. Therefore, we use one bread instead of wafers or biscuits that are separate pieces. During the Holy Communion, we use grape juice rather than wine because of Jesus' description of the cup. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Matthew chapter 26, verse 29. The bread and the cup used in the communion are physical items we can touch and eat. But in the spirit, they are more than the tangible food we see. Jesus tells us that the bread is his body. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And in Matthew, Jesus says that the cup is his blood. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Matthew chapter 26, verses 27 to 28. Jesus did not say that the bread symbolizes his body, but says the bread is his body. Likewise, the cup does not symbolize his blood, but is his blood. Just as Jesus blessed and gave thanks for the bread and cup during his final meal with his disciples, when we consecrate the bread and cup today, in the Spirit, they are his true flesh and blood that we can partake in. In John chapter 6, before a large crowd, Jesus proclaimed that he is the bread of life and that the people in the world need to eat his flesh. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John chapter 6, verse 51. Those who heard Jesus at the time could not understand how that was possible. In response to their confusion, Jesus did not change or qualify his statement. Jesus stated again that they needed to eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood. And the reason He gave was that it is linked to eternal life and resurrection. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. John chapter 6, verse 54 Today, we partake of His body and blood through keeping the sacrament of the Holy Communion, which is needed for us to reach our ultimate goal of eternal life and to be resurrected on the last day. Jesus also said, Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. John chapter 6 verse 56 the statement is similar to Jesus' statement regarding the sacrament of food washing. Just as we can have a part with Jesus through food washing, we abide in Jesus and He in us through the Holy Communion. Though we may not understand the mystery behind how the physical bread and cup are also the flesh and blood of Christ, we keep the Lord's command with faith that the Holy Communion directly links to our salvation.